All right, welcome to Coffee with Marcus. And this is the wrong camera. <laughs> Look at this. I have another camera connected right now and now I'm talking directly to you. I'm still playing around with the other one and when I'm ready, of course, I'll show you the other camera angle as well. Anyhow, so today we got to talk about what's happening in the markets because wow, today <laughs> the markets are kind of crazy. And then as always, I give you an update on what happened to my trading account in December. We'll also take a look a little bit of uh, the year looking back. Uh, we'll look at commissions. We're looking at uh, how much I paid in interest for margin and all of the good stuff. Then I'll show you the trades that I'm currently in, what I'm trading right now. And then as always, since you're here live, I'm here to answer all of your questions or let's say at least as many as I can. OK, as you can see, we have a full program. So let's get started. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent, because that is the key to long-term success in the market. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then click on like right now and let's get started. All right, let's get started. And as always, let's take a quick look of what's happening in the markets. This will only take us two or three minutes. And then, yes, we will talk about what happened to my account in December and how did I close out the year? Did I achieve my goals or not? So looking at the market, super interesting. We're looking at the S&P 500. So we came into this week with four losing days in a row. And then today, look at this. I mean, at first, the S&P opened lower. We're looking at a five minute chart, plummeted down. But right now seems to recover a little bit. Very similar uh, here to the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq actually got hit hard last week and also today. Look at this today down 0.7 percent. But I think uh, at some point we were down as much as 2 percent. So it almost looks right now as a reversal bar. We still do have a few minutes in the trading session around what uh, 28 minutes or something like this. And we talked about it this morning in the market update. What is happening right now? There's four things that are keeping the markets on edge. And this is why the VIX has been higher today, but also pulling back right now. Now, first of all, uh, tomorrow, Fed Chair Powell will be speaking again. This uh, time he is giving a testimony in front of the uh, hearing uh, of the nomination committee of the Senate. I believe it's the Senate uh, committee. So we want to know what does he say? What are his thoughts uh, after the markets tanked last week when the Fed meeting minutes uh, were released? Uh, now expecting three, maybe four rate hikes. And this is what the markets don't know. Then, of course, we have COVID cases still spiking, raging through the country, raging through the world. Uh, what, what else? We have the inflation numbers tomorrow. We have the CPI. Then we have the PPI report. So that's uh, uh, two key inflation numbers that the Fed is keeping an eye on. So, I mean, all of these things are happening. And then, of course, we have earnings season kicking off. Interest rates spiking higher. Banks are kicking off. Uh, earning season towards the end of the week. We have Wells Fargo, we have JP Morgan and Citi reporting earnings. So no surprise, the markets are on edge. And this is what I am expecting this week. So this week, I expect the markets to be very volatile with Powell's statement tomorrow, with the CPI report, with the PPI report. So the markets will remain on edge. Now, honestly, I did not expect the markets to sell off on Monday. I thought after four losing days, we would tick higher. But Hey, this is basically telling us what will happen here this week. And uh, if you are trading, I mean, strap in and be prepared. It will be a roller coaster ride this week. You will go from running around the house, being happy as can be, skipping around the house and saying, this is awesome, to days where you just will go back into bed, uh, pulling the, <laughs> the covers over you and say, when is this finally over? But hey, such is life as traders. I mean, I, I wish I could tell you that all is just happiness and going up. And if you look at the markets, uh, let's just take a look at the S&P here uh, over the weekly charts. So you see, if you, if you look at the weekly charts in the long term, it looks good. Last year, the S&P 500 was up 27 percent. The Nasdaq was up, what, like 25 percent. 
So uh, it all looks good, but then we have these weeks here, and uh, I'm still on a weekly chart. You see on a weekly chart, it looks so harmless, but if we go back on a daily chart, these are the weeks that make you bite your nails or might make you bite your nails. Who knows? I don't know about you. Uh, all I know is that I follow my plan. I've been trading in the markets for a long time. I'm keeping following my plan. And uh, I mean, thus far over the years, it has worked out for me. Okay, good, good, good. So, but uh, let's talk about the main event. Let's talk about the account update uh, for December 2021. And uh, also let's talk about of what happened here last year. So, uh, just a very brief recap. If you're not new to this channel, so on January 11th last year, I put $250,000 cash into an account. Uh, this is a margin account, so this gives me $500,000 in buying power. And uh, what, what I said uh, last year, this really, oh my gosh, today is what? January 10th. It has been exactly, almost exactly to the day a year ago. Uh, I said, I want to trade for a living, meaning that uh, my goal was to make $15,000 per month or $180,000 per year. Now, uh, on this particular account, I told you that I'll be trading the wheel strategy. And uh, the idea here was to, or the idea still is, to generate SRC profit, systematic, repeatable, and consistent. And again, I started trading this account on January 11th, and here are the realized profits over the past few months. So as you can see, January, February, March, overachieved my goal here. Then in April, a little bit less, and uh, this is what you'll see. Some months you're overachieving your goal, some months you're not. And the important thing is, one of the questions that I received recently, hey, uh, when you achieved your goal, do you stop trading for the months? No, because it means that this is a good month. If I achieve my goal in the second or third week, I will definitely keep going because you will have months like this where you need to make up for months where you're falling short of your goal. Then May almost hit my goal. Uh, June 22,000, then July 16,666. <laughs> I mean, wow. Uh, that's an interesting number. Uh, August, just shy of this. Then uh, September, October. October, as you know, looking back at the markets here, I mean, the markets were uh, just trending in October, just moving higher, higher, higher. For the wheel strategy, this is not the best strategy, uh, the best uh, market condition. For the wheel strategy, choppy market conditions like this are actually good. So anyhow, as you can see in October, only 5,733, November 16,911. So going into December, um, end of November, I had $183,039 in realized profits. Now again, there's unrealized profits and we'll talk about those, of course. So how did I do in December? Now, uh, first of all, in December, I'm usually trading a little bit lighter. And this is what you'll see here. So in December, uh, let's just bring up the number, the big reveal, dun, 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 $5,001. And this is basically because I, I don't like to trade uh, the week of uh, the Christmas week. This is when I'm usually unwinding positions. And in the last uh, uh, trading week of the year, where we often have this Santa Claus rally going on, I mean, this is super illiquid. So I'm basically not trading after the, uh, what was it, 19th or 20th of, uh, of December here. Anyhow, uh, so also knowing that I already achieved my goal, I decided, you know what, I'll keep it a little bit easy here and uh, ended the year at $188,040 in realized profits. Now, a question that I get all the time is, okay, how much are you paying in commissions? How much are you paying in margin interest? How much are you paying in other fees? And I thought, you know what, uh, it, it would be nice to, to show you exactly how much I'm paying. I mean, if, if you want to, it's up to you. Uh, if you would like to see how much exactly I have been paying in uh, in interest, in uh, commissions, uh, just like this video and I'll uh, continue here and show you everything. Okay, so uh, let's talk about commission and fees. Commissions, uh, in 2021, I have been with Tastyworks and uh, I paid $1,920 in, in commissions. That is uh, already considering that Tastyworks is one of the cheaper brokers, but uh, that's still a pretty good chunk here. So if you, if you compare this, it's around 1%. Uh, of the profits are in commissions. So then we also always have um, the NFA fees. And the NFA fees, uh, th this is something that you cannot avoid. I mean, whatever broker you have, at least here in the United States, if you're trading at the US exchanges, 
you're paying these fees. So no matter, it's it's almost like cell phone providers, you know, when you have your, your cell phone provider and uh, <clears throat> this is where you're paying the regulatory FCC fees. So you can't avoid those. Okay, now, uh, one of the important aspects is how much in margin, because as I told you, uh, I am using a margin account. So the margin interest that I paid over the year was around $500 per month, so $6,373,000. So that's a total of $9,358 that I have been paying in commission and fees. And I, I looked at this and uh, this is where I thought, you know what, that's actually a lot. I mean, I mean $9,358, uh, that's... <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty good steak meal, right? I could go to a, to a nice uh, restaurant. You can actually have a nice vacation. So this is where this year I am going to lower these. So uh, let me just show you of what I am doing here this year. I am changing over to Tradier. Uh, I've been talking about Tradier, the brokerage, and uh, the, the reason why is because here, instead of paying $1,920 in commissions for the year, I'm only paying $10 per month. So this gives me $120 per year. So if you, if you look at the um, at the savings here, right? I mean, so for commissions, I will have a, a savings of around $1,800 uh, that's what, uh, around, uh, what, $150 per month? Does that sound about right? Probably a little bit more if you divide it by 12. You get the idea. I, I think, no, it's around $150 a month. So that's not bad at all, uh, right? And I mean, why not? So I am switching over to Tradier, and in a moment, I'll tell you exactly how I'm planning to do this. Now, the NFA fees, as I said, they will be the same. So the NFA fees is something that uh, the uh, NFA and exchange fees, I, I should say this. So it's it's NFA uh, and exchange fees. So there's a, there's just a bunch of other fees that you, you always see tagged onto your account. And uh, that's where we stand. So they're the same. Now margin, uh, I'll probably save another $1,200 in margin because Tastyworks right now has been charging me six and a half percent in margin interest. Uh, with trade year, it's only five and a quarter. So that's a saving of one and a quarter. And uh, so instead of paying 6,373, if I would use the same amount of margin, and of course, never know, right? I mean, this is where uh, we, we got to see of how I will trade here this year, how many times I'm getting assigned. Last year, I've been assigned 16% of the time. So on 16% of the trades, I have been assigned. And this is why I have been tapping into margin because I told you from the very beginning, I am using a margin account here. So anyhow, uh, this will give me another uh, $1,200 savings. So as you can see, it's a total of around uh, 3,000, a little bit over $3,000 in savings that I'm expecting this year of changing over to Tradier. Now, if you would like to learn more about the brokerage, I'll leave a link in the description. I compared brokerages. It might not be for you. Uh, it really depends uh, how big your account is, how much are you trading? Are you using margin? Are you not using margin? You see, if you're not using margin, then this is probably irrelevant. Uh, if you're trading small sizes, uh, if you have a rather small account and you're trading only one or two lots, uh, it probably doesn't add up. But I'm often trading uh, 20 lots, uh, 40 lots, 60 lots. And even though Tastyworks is capping it at, uh, uh, at $10 uh, per trade, it still adds up here. Okay. So as you can see, this is where I wrote it down. The total savings are $3,025. So now the question is, uh, how exactly do I move the accounts? And there's two possibilities that I looked into. The, the first possibility is the so-called ACAT transfer. This is where you transfer one account, including all of the positions over to another account. And uh, this can, uh, can take up to two weeks. And I was thinking about it, especially uh, during the holidays, it's probably not at fa as fast. And during this time, while everything is moved over, you, you can't really trade. I mean, technically it is possible. Long story short, that sounded a little bit tricky. Now, as you know, um, I do have still cash available that I can put into accounts and therefore I decided to use option number two. And here is option number two. 
The possibility too is gradual. And here's what I mean by this. Uh, the idea here is that I will of course keep the Tastyworks account and keep reporting of what's happening here in the Tastyworks account, but I'm unwinding the positions. So I came into the year with uh, five positions. So I had uh, the Arc F, the Boeing position, the LVS, the Ride, and the UNG position. And we'll take a look at those in a moment. Uh, now on Friday, I got called away with Boeing. So this is where right now, I am not replacing this position in that Tastyworks account, uh, but I'm unwinding the position. So as I'm getting called away from more and more positions, I'm unwinding this account. And at the same time, I decided to put $250,000 into a trade year account, right? So this were uh, $250,000. This is a margin account. So this means the margin account is giving me $500,000 in buying power. And this is where I will ramp up. So what, what, what you can imagine, think about it this way, that uh, for some time I'm trading these two accounts here uh, against my existing positions, I will still sell calls, uh, but I will not I will not enter new positions unless it is selling calls against the existing positions, okay? Or I'm getting called away. And uh, when I'm getting called away, it frees up buying power. And this is where then I will actually, and that's here step number three that I've written down. I thought that I've written it down. Okay, so we talked about this as margin, uh, yeah. So then as this buying power becomes available, as I'm freeing up this money here in the Tastyworks account, I move this back over into a checking account. So this is, as I said, it's the, the gradual possibility. So uh, probably for the next few weeks, um, since I'm already now in, in four positions in this account, uh, well, I flew a rescue mission and ride. So consider it like five positions. So it's almost like trading uh, two $250,000 account, but I'm only taking trades in the trade year account, uh, which I will show you here in a moment versus the, um, the Tastyworks account. Anyhow, so this is the idea uh, as this becomes available to move it out of there. And uh, I, I wish that this would show up nicely, but you get the idea. Okay. So in a little bit, I will take a look at, uh, as always, I will show you my current trades, my current positions, but I know that there's always a, a lot of questions around this when I'm showing off what happened here to my account. And uh, for those of you who have been following me for a whole year, it has been a ride. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> While well, we talk about the right position here in a moment. Uh, but uh, let's uh, let's just talk about and let's see what questions you have. It's so good to see everybody here. Uh, Nicole, Jim, Ihor, Mark, uh, 1996 Texas Cowboy. Okay. So uh, thoughts on Etsy. We can take a look at this in a moment. I'll come back to you, Don. I uh, just wanted to see if there's some uh, other questions that are coming up here thus far. Jim says, yeah. Stockfire sale tomorrow. I mean, there were several opportunities this morning and I'll show you, as I said in a moment, my existing position. So I did enter a new position here this morning in the trade year account. So we will definitely talk about this. Yeah, happy new year if you haven't talked yet. It is already January 10th, 10 days into the year and it has been good. I mean, Boeing got called away and uh, this was uh, a $4,000 profit already. Uh, so this was on uh, Friday on January 7th. So after one week, already up $4,000. I'll take that. I'll take this. <laughs> okay. And yeah, um, Michael said, uh, hello from Atlanta. Let's close this in green. Michael, by the way, have you received the video? I did a video for you on Friday after the close. Last week was completely busy. Um, Vivian should have sent it to you. Uh, let me know if uh, she sent it to you. Just leave a comment here. I just wanted to know if you got it. Otherwise, check your email. Uh, should be an email from Vivian. I gave her the video to send to you. All right. Good, good, good. So, <clears throat> What else do we have here? So uh, JK says uh, this $500,000 account is only, that is the one for the wheel strategy. So uh, right now I have with uh, Tastyworks, um, I dissolved a small account there. So I still have two accounts with Tastyworks. I have four accounts right now with Trade Year. I have three accounts with Interactive Brokers. And yes, I just over the weekend, finally, 
open an account to trade cryptocurrency. So that's a dedicated account. So I'm no longer a crypto virgin here. So over the weekend with the dip, I bought some Bitcoin and some Ethereum. So we, we can talk about this in uh, an upcoming coffee with Marcus. So yes, I do have, uh, how many accounts are this? Two, six, uh, around nine accounts plus the, uh, the cryptocurrency account. So it's like 10 accounts uh, overall here. Uh, so that, so this, this particular account, uh, where I put the $250,000 in there, uh, it's exclusively for the wheel. So Dominic is saying, are you planning to integrate Tastyworks with PowerX Optimizer? Uh, right now, no. Uh, so, uh, but, 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 uh, the good news is that right now we are talking to a company who says that they have a universal API to integrate with multiple brokers. So we are evaluating this. So we might, we might actually have some good news. Ask me again towards the end of the month in a few weeks from now. And uh, Rochester, yeah, it's a, it, it's a lot for fees. Um, there, there, there's a lot going on here, right? I mean, Jim here said it. Uh, so Fidelity, zero margin fees. Okay, if you're not using margin, then of course there's zero margin fees. Uh, $2,700 in commission and uh, $238 in other fees. Okay, so this is where every broker is different. And this is why I said earlier, you, you really need to evaluate which broker makes the most sense for you. All right, uh, Chris from Austria. So good to see you. Come on, auf Deutsch sprechen, huh? <laughs> okay, back to English. Back to English. Okay, good. Uh, what else? Um, so Rochester says I pay one percent in margin with interactive brokers. And yeah, you see, Rochester, this is where I said it really depends. What is best for you here, right? Uh, so if you are using a lot of margin, then this is something that you want to pay attention to. If you are just mainly opening uh, trades and closing trades, you want to pay attention to commissions. If assignment is a basic fa uh, major factor for you, you want to look at assignment fees. If you're constantly transferring money in and out of your account, you want to see how much does it cost to transfer in and out. So um, I, I don't think, um, Rochester and everybody else, that there's a one-size-fits-all. You see, um, Jim is with Fidelity. I've been with Tastyworks. For me and the way how I trade and my structure here, it does make sense for me to switch to trade year. And I thought about it uh, during the last two weeks of the year, which for me is always a time when I look back at my accounts, I look what happened here and decided to move several ones here uh, into the other trade year account. So that's uh, why I closed uh, close to Tastyworks account. And again, I'm in the process of closing this other account here that I'm winding down. And uh, right now I have uh, one other account with Tastyworks and it's probably too much to go through this today, but in one of the upcoming Coffee with Marcus, I will explain to you, uh, if you want, I mean, it's up to you, uh, but uh, then I can explain to you of why I'm having multiple accounts and what is the purpose of each of the accounts. I, I mean, if you're interested in this, just click on like right now and, and let me know because this way I have a little counter here. You see, I'm looking at my, my laptop. Uh, this is where I also see your comments. Uh, so on this little counter, I see when the likes are going up that you're interested in this and then I can do a coffee with Marcus around it. I don't know, maybe uh, the next one or in two coffee with Marcus. We shall see, we shall see. Um, Raj says you, you, you can't transfer your losses. Well, you, you can transfer your positions, right? You, you can transfer your positions and when you transfer your position, you can actually transfer over and with trade year, you can tell them, okay, you would like to, uh, your cost basis, right? So where you got in and then you still see the loss. So anyhow, this is the um, ACAT, ACAT uh, thing here. So you got to look into this, whether this makes sense for you or not. Juan says, uh, it charges $10 every time you get uh, assigned. Yeah, but you see, I only was assigned 16% uh, of the time. So I uh, really ran the numbers and it seems that I'm still saving a lot here in commissions. And Juan, this goes back to, if you have a lot of assignments, let's say if you're getting assigned 20% of the time, 30% of the time, 40 or 50% of the time, right? In this case, uh, you want to pay attention to that. Absolutely. Okay. Good, good, good. So uh, David says, uh, oh, he's uh, asking Jim, okay, uh, really news, any advice on cash secure puts? So you can do that. Okay, um, 
Didn't ask any news on uh, trade your portfolio margin. Um, I talked to Dan, uh, the, the CEO and co-founder of Tradier, and they're planning to do it this quarter. So it's not yet available. So this year, uh, the $250,000 account is a regular account, not yet portfolio margin. Uh, trust me, I will be the first to hear about it. And then you will be the first to hear about this. Okay. Good, good, good. So what else do we have? Uh, we, we, uh, you know what? Uh, why don't we jump over here uh, for a moment? Uh, oh my gosh, Francois, before we do this, Francois, uh, I have the perfect spot for your Christmas present that you sent me. And uh, I'll, I'll send you a picture. I'll send you a picture. You're going to love it. Uh, it's, it's really, it looks so cool. Thanks again. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, so let's let's talk about a, a few trades that I'm in, and then we can go back here because I know that there's always questions. Okay, do, do you still have right? What what about uh, Arc F and all the good stuff? So we will talk about this, and uh, so let's jump over and here we are. Fantastic. Okay. So um, oh, we see the NASDAQ. Let's go to a five minute chart of the NASDAQ. Well, NASDAQ is pulling out of this. Look at this. Will we end the day positive? We have what? Five more minutes left in the trading session and the NASDAQ is down right now. 0.08% uh, are on the flat line and maybe we finish positive for today. We shall see. We shall see. Okay. So uh, let's take a look. First of all, there's a power X trade that I have DCP and uh, we can show it here on the power X optimizer. So if you're moving over to DCP, it was getting super, super close of hitting my first profit target. As you can see, uh, on January 5th, already almost there, uh, my first profit target is at 29.51. So I'm long here from 25.85, so this is up nicely. Today, a little bit all over the place with oil prices, because this is here, uh, an energy company, oil and gas midstream, as you can see. Uh, anyhow, so we shall see. I hope that uh, later this week it will hit my first profit target and then my second profit target is at 31.34. So then now uh, going to the Tastyworks account. Going to the Tastyworks account, we have ARCF here. So ARCF still in there. Uh, right now it is getting close to rescue mission territory. So let me switch back to a daily chart here. So with this, I got assigned at uh, 47 or 47.50, uh, somewhere around there. So rescue territory would be around 33. And this is where we see also, let's just uh, switch to a weekly chart here for a moment, um, where we see that there is some additional support right here at around the 33 mark. So right now, I just want to see if, if ARCF, Kathy Wood does some reshuffling here. Uh, when it finds a bottom. So today, as you can see, we also together with the NASDAQ do have a reversal here. So ARGEF uh, pulling higher, we, we shall see. I'll keep you posted of what's happening there. Anyhow, so that's still in the Tastyworks account. LVS, LVS, uh, yep, also moving lower today since uh, coronavirus. I mean, these cases are still spiking. They're moving higher. It's raging through the world. No end inside. I believe that uh, Hong Kong uh, close the borders again, and LVS has uh, has a lot going on here in uh, in Asia, especially in Macau. So um, going a little bit all over the place. Seem to have found a bottom here at 34. So um, we will see. My cost basis here is at uh, 46.48, and I've been doing these art trades, the adjusted rescue trades here, to collect some premium if it closes between 38 and 41. So I'll put on another art trade probably tomorrow. Well, then we have ride, ride, ride. We know about ride. So no news there. And we talked about this. There's probably um, towards the end of the quarter or maybe next quarter, they might say that they have some certifications. So here, uh, this is uh, what is a long term investment? A long term investment is a short term investment go wrong, right? So this, uh, well, I'll probably uh, keep ride in that account for, for a while, uh, because at this point, you see, the upside potential, there's more upside potential than there's downside. Can it go to zero? Yes. Can it go to a dollar? Can it go to two dollars? Yes. But at this point, I believe based on my research that I've done, there's more uh, potential to the upside. So we'll see and I'll keep you posted as always. 
Uh, UNG is another one in the account looking really, really good. Right now I'm trying to sell the 1450 call and uh, for the 1450 call, I have a limit order in the market for 15 cents. This would give me $900 until the end of the week. Uh, right now the bid ask uh, is 12 over 14. So we have one more minute left for trading. So really nicely going up here. So UNG probably maybe by the end of the week getting called away and this will be then part of the other unwinding that I'm doing. So since I am right now trading this other account, so last week I already entered a GDX trade and the GDX trade here at uh, $29. So I sold a, a 26 put, there we go, at $29. And as you can see, this is nicely working out thus far. So this is expiring this week. So we'll see, maybe I can close this early. We shall see. Also last week, we entered a cold trade, selling a put at 45, expiring this week. So uh, let's see what happens there. This morning it came close to what, 45, uh, 45 34, uh, but we are looking good here. Calls today a little bit all over the place, not pulling up as high as the NASDAQ because Colts is also more of a value stock here. So it's probably more comparable to what the Dow and the S&P did today. Yeah, probably more like the, the Dow. Uh, so the Nasdaq, we did, look at this, we did finish in the green by 6.0.05%. Okay, anyhow, uh, so these are in the in the trade year account. And then this morning I entered CWH and uh, for CWH, I did sell uh, the 36 put. So 36 puts right here. Let's mark this. Boom, there we go. And uh, this is looking good. So this morning as it was plummeting down, uh, that's where there was some good premium. And I know that several of our mastermind members took this trade here as well. So right now, uh, four trades in the Tastyworks account, three trades in the Tradier account. And uh, these are the positions that I have right now. All right, let's come back here and uh, look at... Uh, at the questions, uh, Jeffrey says, what services are you using a trade year? I'm just using the, the dash. I am not paying for any of the add-ons that they have. Uh, what is the one called? Um, it's not TradeFox. I don't know, you know what I mean, right? I'm just using the, uh, the main dashboard here, uh, like uh, this one. Uh, let me just show you. See, uh, da, 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 da. like this, this is the dash thingy, right? Uh, so that's, th this does everything that I wanted to do. I can enter my positions. You see this where I have the, the buyback um, call, buyback the, uh, no buyback, sorry, buyback the put at two cents for GDX and then the CWH trade that I entered today. All right. So David, please show the trades that you were assigned and uh, went against you. These are the trades. So uh, ARGF, LVS, right and UNG. And again, UNG looks like possibly unwinding this by the end of the week. BA was another trade. Uh, let's just go over there. BA, I got, BA, I got assigned at uh, 207.50. And at first, this was going here as low as, as you can see, 185, right? So, uh, and then it came back. So overall, lots in premium. Uh, just the, the last round here that I did close it with $4,000. And this was only for a one or two week trade. And before this, I've been doing that quite a lot. So we will see. I, I think that uh, UNG has a good chance of being called away today. And then we need to see what's happening here with Kathy Wood and RGF. And uh, we also need to see what happens to LVS and Wright. Probably nothing before the second or the third quarter here. All right, David. Does this help? Okay. Hey, Kevin. So good to see you here. Made CWM today. Uh, good to see you here. Okay. Good, good, good. What else? And uh, okay, Michael, I see that you have received, no, you're the best, really. Thank you so much for sharing your success. I am really super happy to see how well you have been doing. This is amazing how much money you were able to add to your retirement account by trading the wheel here. Okay, good, good, good. So Let's see, uh, so-called value costs are recover faster, but growth stocks is a good opportunity. Well, Stefan, you, you see, uh, so value stocks usually give you less in premium. I mean, growth stocks always give you more in premium. And this is why it's always very tempting to trade growth stocks, right? Uh, I mean, 
growth stocks, whether it's a CSIQ or I mean, even when you look at Coinbase or Robinhood, but they are also very, very dangerous. So yes, there's always a trade off between the amount of premium that you can make and the quality of stock that you're trading. Yeah. All right. So um, 1969 Kobe says my, my plan uh, was to use only 25% of my margin. However, CWH was way too tempting and I took another position. See, this is where I think it's important that you, you need to follow your plan because you need to be careful with this too tempting, right? I mean, obviously, you know what you're doing, but make sure that you follow your plan because we don't know what happens here uh, over the next few weeks, over the next few days, right? So CWH could go down. You could get a sign. So be careful, follow your plan. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Oscar, see that we have a bowl of ice. That sounds good. That sounds good. JK, how do you keep up with so many accounts? Uh, it, it's actually not that difficult. So I'll, as I said, I'll, I'll do a, a coffee with Marcus. And uh, you see, most of, the, most of the brokers allow you to switch accounts with a click of the button. So you just need to be logged in to brokers. And I, I want to be absolutely transparent. Uh, the the accounts at Interactive Brokers are right now, I'm not actively trading them. And there's a reason. I'll share with you in one of the upcoming Coffee with Marcus why I still have them there and what I'm planning to do with those. All right. Good, good, good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Rochester says, how to keep track of all of these accounts. You see, this were, um, I don't know, it's like herding cats. You start with one, then you have a second, then a third. And before you know it, you have a house full of cats. You, you get the idea. You get the idea, right? Uh, okay. Andre says, created a trader account because of you. Uh, can you work with them to make uh, you, their UI a little bit more user friendly? Andre, what we are doing is we are incorporating it more and more into PowerX Optimizer. So this is where uh, you'll see, for example, if I'm switching back here to PowerX Optimizer, if you want to place a trade, so for example, this morning, the CWA trade, you see, I can just say, place order. And when I do this, it immediately goes over, fills everything out. And then all you need to do is click on preview and hit submit, right? So, and, and we will do this more for OCO orders, for closing orders. But right now we already have this for entry orders. So uh, this is super easy. And uh, yeah, I, th they clearly said, we don't want to change a whole lot in the interface here, but they have a really, really good API that makes it a little bit easier for us to integrate with them and uh, to do it here. Anyhow, um, hope that this helps. Uh, let's see. We need to come back here. Andre, does this help? Okay. So um, Gio says, is the wheel the favorite strategy at this stage? It, it really depends uh, on two things. First of all, what are your goals, right? I mean, tra are you trading for income or are you trading for growth? If you're trading for growth, I believe that you need a trading strategy where you can apply stop losses as well as profit targets so that you can apply money management. Trading for growth means that you want to grow your account quickly. Then if you're at the stage where you're trading for income, right, where account growth is no longer your primary objective, but being able to uh, just consistently grow the account and maybe taking out uh, money of the account, if that is your goal, then you should consider the wheel, right? So uh, this is the first thing. Secondly, you also want to take a look at the market conditions, right? I mean, obviously, uh, in October, this was just great when you have a trending market. When you have a trending market, it's good for the PowerX strategy. If you have a market that is rather choppy like this, uh, where you see that there is some port, uh, support, if it is a range bound market, I believe that's a great market for the wheel strategy. Okay. Does this help, Gios? Okay. Good, good, good. So Oscar says, is the OCO and others close to becoming uh, to web and just mobile? Uh, so this for trade year, uh, we are probably two weeks away from releasing it in PowerX Optimizer. If you have PowerX Optimizer within, I, I, let me say it like this, by the end of the month, our goal is by the end of the month, you can place OCO orders through PowerX. And as you know, PowerX, you can run it on a desktop, on a, uh, on mobile, it doesn't really matter where you do this. So uh, I don't think that uh, Tradier is changing their desktop application, but you can definitely do it on the Tradier mobile app or we'll have it in PowerX Optimizer here. 
And yeah, uh, there's a $9 fee on trade year when you get assigned. So this is where, um, I mean, Kevin, I know that your log is, is fantastic that shows you how many times you were assigned, right? So this is where it, it's super easy for you to calculate whether it makes sense or not. It's a, a $9 flat fee per assignment, no matter how many contracts, right? Whether it's only one contract or whether it's 10 contracts or 40 contracts, 60 contracts. So yes, there is an assignment fee. And this is why I love, love, love uh, your trading log. And uh, we were taking a lot of inspiration from this trading log to integrate one into PowerX Optimizer. We already talked about this. So yeah, just calculate it for yourself of what makes the most sense for you. Okay, so um, Armin says, uh, update of the PowerX Optimizer regarding the EPS integration. What is EPS? Earnings per share? Um, well, we have right now this uh, little thing that you can click on. Uh, let me just show you, right? So. I don't know if you have seen this, for example, for BHC, if you click on this little thing, it right, goes right here to uh, Google Finance where you have all of this stuff, right? I mean, the PE ratio, the EPS, where you see the quarterly performance, annual performance. So you have lots of uh, stuff right here. So that's what we are playing right now. Not quite sure if I'm understanding your uh, question right, Armin. So we'll see. Okay. What else do we have there? Is there a sneak peek, a sneak peek at OCO and others? Uh, um, give me until next week. Next week, I might be able to give you a sneak peek. Uh, I just need to talk to the dev team here that they put it on the server. So we'll see. What else do we have? And uh, Francisco, yeah, um, Interactive Brokers is great for uh, EU customers. Uh, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Um, Kevin, no, it's it's nine dollars, right? It's only when you when you get assigned, not when you get called away. It's only assignment fee here. Okay. Uh, can you recommend a good spreadsheet for tracking uh, CC trades? I assume that this says covered calls. Probably build your own. Uh, if you're in our community, uh, look up for uh, for Kevin's uh, wheel tracker. Uh, he just released version two point zero. It's it's pretty amazing. <laughs> it's really pretty amazing here. Okay. Um, what else? Do we have, Victor says, I love hearing all these accounts, nuts and bolts and results uh, that you're still changing things up even with your experience. I, I think we have to, the markets are ever changing. You see, if the markets are ever changing, uh, we, we have to change as traders. This is something, uh, you might have heard me saying this, my, my kids are both active sailors and uh, as sailors, they always say, you know what, you can't change the wind, but you can adjust your sails. And uh, it's the same with the markets as the markets are ever changing. I mean, have we ever seen a market where we have recovered that quickly? Uh, let's just go back here and let's go to a weekly chart of uh, the NASDAQ or the S&P 500. Have you ever experienced a market where we have recovered from a 30% drawdown within a few weeks and, and then have been better off? I don't think so, right? I mean, uh, a black swan event. Uh, the last time in 2008, when we had this, uh, this dramatic dip here, uh, it took us years to recover. But I think we were all learning from this. And the same is here as traders, right? So we are learning this from trader here. Anyhow, so that's why you always, always, always have to uh, have to stay on your toes. The markets will keep you on your toes. That's for sure. All right, Francois says, I took Visa this morning. Okay. Uh, what is your uh, view on the interest, right? Will it affect trading cards like American or MasterCard? I don't know. I think overall Visa is a solid. Let's take a look at this here really quick, Francois. Um, let's take a look at, uh, at Visa. And uh, we're looking here at a weekly chart. So let's switch this over to, oh, we can actually stay for a moment on a weekly chart. This is where you already see, I mean, ever since we had the dip in the pandemic, but then They've been trading very solidly above 190. So in a range, I want to say between 190 and 240. So um, most recently, there was definitely some support at 200. So you took the 202. I wouldn't be too concerned about this. You can look up the financials and see how they're doing. I'm not quite sure how this affects a credit card processing company. I know uh, that usually rate hikes are really good uh, for uh, for banks. Like if you look at Wells Fargo, YPIA. If you look at Citibank, YPIA. If you look at Bank of America, YPIA. So ever since we heard about the interest rate, so it seems that uh, if you look at Visa and other credit card processors, that they are kind of reacting adversely to this. 
So it seems that higher interest rates, just looking at the charts and not knowing much about credit card companies here, just looking at the charts here, it seems that, uh, yeah, higher interest rates do, do not seem to be good for them. Anyhow, does this help? Good, good, good. What else do we have here? Super Dave, happy, happy new year. Oh, there's uh, Francoise again. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> all right. Wow. okay. Time is flying when you're having fun. So uh, I understand that you are interested in learning more about the multiple accounts What I uh, that I have, also how much money I have in the accounts. Uh, if you would like to know this, uh, do me a favor and click on like, and then we can do this in one of the upcoming uh, Coffee with Marcus that I show you what I have, what is the purpose of the accounts, how much money do I keep in them, why and why do I have them with different brokers? Why do I have accounts with Tastyworks and with Tradier and with Interactive Brokers and a crypto account that is not Tastyworks, so it's separate um, that I'm trading there at an exchange. Anyhow, hope that this was fun. Hope that this was helpful. Well, 2021 has been flying by. 2022 is off to a rocky start. But again, as traders, what can we do? We cannot change the wind but we can adjust our sales. And that's what we do in these market conditions. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, be careful with your money. Trade responsibly. Okay, have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care, everybody.